Last night, Twitter accepted Elon Musk's offer to purchase the platform for $44 billion. So the bird is officially under new ownership. And as a result, as always happens, whenever Elon Musk does anything, the internet has started losing its mind. With half of the people believing that Elon Musk is the embodiment of pure evil itself, and other people believing that he is the Messiah walking the earth and that he can do nothing wrong. But most of this rampant Elon fanaticism seems to take place amongst blue check marks on Twitter, and nobody really cares about what they have to say. But there are a few other interesting highlights that I've seen that have been occurring as a result of this transaction. One that I noticed is that right after it was revealed that Elon Musk is gonna be the new owner of Twitter, the White House announced that they are looking into making changes to Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, which currently states that no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. So in other words, online platforms that host or republish speech are protected against various laws that would otherwise hold them legally responsible for what other people do or say on the platform, things like liable laws. So this is something that gives online platforms the option to be a free speech platform, for them to be like a modern day public square where people can go and freely share and freely exchange their ideas. And it also gives people that are living in countries that don't have freedom of speech laws the ability to do the same thing. And in many ways, they can do the same thing in a more effective way than if they were to go to the public square in their local town and maybe say some things against the government. If it's a sparsely populated town, there might only be a couple dozen or a couple hundred people that hear them or see them, and then they might get imprisoned or killed by the government for what they did. But if they go and create a Twitter account and they start gaining a large following, they might be able to spread this message to hundreds or thousands of people and hopefully be a lot safer from persecution. I find it very interesting and concerning that our government is looking into changing these rules right around the time that Twitter's ownership is changing hands. Because whether you like it or not, I mean, I know I'm certainly not a big fan of this fact, but Twitter is the modern day public square. Really all social media is the modern day public square, but of course Twitter makes up a big part of that. I find it very interesting and also concerning that the government is looking into making these changes to the law at the same time that Twitter's ownership is changing hands. Because whether you like it or not, I know I'm certainly not a big fan of this fact, but Twitter is essentially the modern day public square. Really all social media is the modern day public square, but obviously Twitter is a very big part of that. And you can tell that this is the case by large social movements that got started on Twitter. Things like Occupy Wall Street or Me Too or even successful presidential campaigns, they got to start on Twitter. So clearly Twitter is very essential to public discourse. And it seems to me like the US government is afraid of the new owner of the public discourse platform being somebody who isn't exactly in the club, or maybe somebody who is in the club, but they're a club member that is much more difficult to control because Elon Musk, he's the wealthiest man on the planet. There's no debating that. He's like 50 times wealthier than Jack Dorsey, the guy who was previously in charge of Twitter. Well, before he resigned and then there was a new CEO, but he was the founder of Twitter. Everybody knows who Jack is. And Elon Musk himself, he doesn't seem to exactly tow the same party lines as the people who are in power. And he's very public about this. For example, we saw what he did with sending the Starlink satellite dishes to Ukraine and surrounding areas that were having internet outages as a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And he said very publicly on Twitter that he is not going to censor any Russian propaganda on Starlink's network because he is a free speech absolutist. That definitely doesn't go in line with all the other people. You know, he didn't uh, go by the playbook and change his profile picture to have a Ukrainian flag overlay and then update his about to say that he stands with Ukraine. He said, no, 
I'm going to allow the Russian propaganda to flow because it's part of being a free speech absolutist. So the government making these moves actually makes me just a little bit more confident that Elon Musk is actually going to do the right thing with Twitter and make it a free speech platform, a place where people are able to freely exchange ideas, because ultimately that's what the government and the people in power are really afraid of, people being able to freely exchange ideas, especially ideas that could harm their positions of power. But there's still a few ideas that Elon Musk has had for changes to the Twitter platform that are a bit concerning to me, like these tweets he made recently where he said, if our Twitter bid succeeds, we will defeat the spam bots or die trying. And then he says, and authenticate all real humans. Now, remember, Twitter is the modern day equivalent of the public square, and it is used by people that are within borders of countries that don't acknowledge free speech. So it's very important for those people on the platform to be able to remain anonymous. Now, it's already difficult to create new anonymous Twitter accounts. Uh, that's part of the reason why I think it's kind of dumb that they just recently created a Onion service because you're not able to really create any kind of anonymous account on there. Uh, Twitter now, and for years now, has required you to create your account with a phone number. And it's pretty difficult to get an anonymous phone number. In fact, in some countries, it's actually illegal because they require you to show ID whenever you purchase a SIM card. And even this phone requirement is clearly not enough to keep all of the bots off of Twitter. So I really don't know how he's going to defeat all of the spam bots and authenticate all of the humans uh, without some way that's going to end up being really creepy. I have a feeling that what'll happen is he'll just take a page out of Facebook's playbook and he's going to require people to upload copies of their photo ID, their driver's license or something like that in order for them to create an account. Which I think would be a terrible idea. It's going to make Twitter absolutely a whole lot less private. And I think that privacy is really essential to having freedom of speech, not just in countries where people are living under some kind of oppressive dictatorship, obviously. It's, it's very obvious why they would need the privacy. But even in countries like America, where we supposedly have freedom of speech, we still have this cancel culture that is rampant, where just because you say something that goes against some, something someone else believes in, people might try to figure out where you work at and they will harass your job in order to get you fired. They might figure out where you live and harass you and your family as some way to get revenge over something that you said on the internet. And there's also people like whistleblowers who usually want a great deal of anonymity whenever they are trying to release information. So if Twitter is going to become even less private as a result of trying to authenticate all the humans, then it's going to be an even less appropriate platform for those kinds of actions. But I'll try to end this on a good note, which is that Elon has been doing several polls on his Twitter over the last couple of months asking people about changes that I guess he wants to make to the platform and getting them to vote on them. And one of them is him asking if the Twitter algorithm should be open source with the overwhelming majority of people saying yes. But this one I think has a bit more merit to it because if you go on pretty much any search engine and you type in Twitter the algorithm, you're going to find this GitHub page that was just created a day ago. And if we go to it, we can see that it's blank. You know, we get this 404, but this is created under the official Twitter GitHub account. Okay, if I go here, you can see that this is the real Twitter account for GitHub. So this leads me to believe that they might actually end up open sourcing the algorithm. And that is a really big deal. Uh, for one, it might put some pressure on other social media companies to do the same because I very strongly believe that all of the social media platforms, but especially Twitter and YouTube, that they have some kind of backdoor manipulative action that they're able to do with their algorithm. I don't believe that their algorithms just organically promote whatever the most popular content is or whatever content you would be most interested in. 
I really believe that they try to promote and they also try to suppress different ideas for different reason. Maybe somebody's paying them for it, but in the case of some of these companies, like especially Google, it really makes me think that they're trying to just do it to promote their own power or promote whatever narratives they personally agree with. Because with Google, we're talking about a trillion dollar company. So I don't really feel like they're trying to make a whole lot more money. Uh, but that's a whole other discussion that we're not going to get into here on YouTube. Um, I'm very excited to see if the Twitter algorithm does actually become open source, if we're able to see are there any biases programmed into it, and if the uh, source code that's published for us to see matches what's going to be running on the servers moving forward, then we're going to know if it has any biases moving forward. Twitter's new owner has also said that his critics will be able to remain on Twitter as well because that's what free speech means. And if this holds true, then my assumption about Elon using Twitter to silence Tesla critics would have been wrong. But I'm going to put this to the test. I'm going to go ahead and create a Twitter account for my business, which should be launching next month. Look out for news about that. And if I'm able to tweet criticisms of Musk and his companies without being shadow banned, then that will prove to me that his claims are true, that he really is a free speech absolutist, and that Musk really does want to make Twitter great again. But that's it for this video, guys. Like and comment to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey, and have a great day.